If I think that something's important enough when I read a book, I fold the page down so that I can go back to it and have a look at it. And it's just occurred to me that there's there's about 10 or 12 folded pages in my science books and maybe I'll I'll get around to looking at them and hunting them down and seeing what I thought was so important and I'm sure it'll be pretty obvious to me as hopefully it will be obvious why I think that this page is worth reading out now Bill Bryson is not a scientist but there's a lot of science in this book and the areas of science which he touches upon that I know reasonably well I haven't found an error in so I think he does his research and I think he's very careful to try and get the best estimates for certain things onto the page and I think that the following is quite important to bear in mind when one is thinking about evolution and the evidence for evolution I quote it isn't easy to become a fossil the fate of nearly all living things over 99.9 percent .9 of them is to compost down to nothingness in order to become a fossil first you must die in the right place only about 15 percent of rocks can preserve fossils so it's no good keeling over on a future site of granite in practical terms the deceased must become buried in sediment where it can leave an impression like a leaf in wet mud or decompose without exposure to oxygen permitting the molecules in its bones and hard parts and very occasionally the softer parts to be replaced by dissolved minerals then as the sediments in which the fossil lies are carelessly pressed and folded and pushed about by the earth's processes the fossil must somehow maintain an identifiable shape finally but above all after tens of millions of years or perhaps hundreds of millions of years hidden away it must be found and recognized as something worth keeping only about one bone in a billion it is thought ever becomes fossilized if that is so it means that the complete fossil legacy of all the Americans alive today that's 270 million people with 206 bones in each will only be about 50 bones that's one quarter of a complete skeleton the fossil record that we have is hopelessly skewed most land animals of course don't die in sediments they drop in the open or are eaten or left to rot and weather down to nothing the fossil record consequently is almost absurdly biased in the favor of marine creatures about 95 percent of all the fossils we possess are of animals that once lived underwater mostly in shallow seas now why did I mention all that it's just because I've been hearing a lot of talk using the expression atheistic evolution now we all know that the religious people have to fight evolution because evolution explains how we got here and for the Christians it removes the idea of Adam and Eve and original sin and if there was no original sin there was no need for Jesus Christ to come and get himself hammered onto some wood so that's why the Christians object to it and of course uh, Islam wouldn't be too happy if uh, Christianity fell because then Jesus just becomes another guy and there was no need for Muhammad to have put him into the Quran um, obviously the name was there just simply to get or to make it more easy to get Christian converts nice move Muhammad smart dude but the thing is when the believers focus on evolution they're really making a huge mistake I mean they think they're being clever because they're attacking something which cannot prove itself and we wouldn't expect it to be able to prove itself you pick on evolution because you know full well that we would have to live millions of years to actually watch evolution take place and even then it might be so pl so slow that we didn't even realize it had happened if you mister or mrs believer would like to imagine going to a universe where it did all happen by pure chance and that the laws of physics did just happen to have the rules that they had 
and the evolution was true, it would look exactly like this universe. Scientists in a purely accidental universe could not prove that evolution took place because it would look exactly as we have it. The scientists would be faced with the same problems by the same believers and they still wouldn't be able to prove it even if it were true, which it is. And you know you're playing that game and then, and then you laugh at us and say that we base our ideas on something without evidence, meaning evolution, as if DNA isn't evidence for evolution, as if a single fossil wouldn't be evidence for evolution. And you don't talk about atheistic physics or atheistic chemistry. Physics proved that the Earth wasn't at the centre of the solar system quite some time ago, and as such, no theist has really gone near the subject ever since, because unlike evolution, which would take hundreds of millions of years to prove you wrong, physics can prove you wrong in an afternoon with the right experimental setup. But you see, the thing is, and what you don't understand, is that evolution is physics. Evolution is controlled by the DNA molecule. The DNA molecule is a hundred billion atoms joined end to end. The thing that binds atoms to atoms is electromagnetism, which is physics. Evolution is just physics on the large scale. It's all it ever was, it's all it's ever going to be. Evolution is the least of your problems. What you really should be asking yourself is why does God need laws of physics in the first place? If he is all powerful and all knowing, why do we have to be made of atoms? Why do we have to be made of DNA? You don't realize that to take on evolution you have to take on DNA. What's it doing there? Why does a god need to use it? You've got to show that DNA cannot have random mutations, which we have proved time and time and time and time again. It's happening in your body right now. You have to take on the laws of electromagnetism, which are what bonds the atoms together to give the DNA molecule its shape and bonds the, the split halves of the DNA when they separate to the identical chemicals that it needs to replicate itself as a whole molecule again. It's just electromagnetism. You've got to take on electricity. You've got to take on how electrons conduct charge. You've got to take on atomic physics you have to take on almost every discipline of science because all of those disciplines of science back up the model of evolution and give it a thoroughly cohesive picture from the beginning of the universe to the present day. It all fits. The fact that there are one or two fossils missing is not surprising. A single fossil is evidence of evolution.